Hi Spring fans, welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. How you doing? It's Wednesday, well at least it is somewhere in the world, and you know what that means. It's time to return to the wonderful world of Springdom. This week we're going to continue our series looking at controllers, and specifically the at controller annotation. Uh, in previous installments we looked at a, a few different examples. We looked at uh, MVC and REST style controllers. The key to thing to remember here is that an at controller annotation uh, it's just a stereotype annotation in the sense that uh, it's a role indicative annotation in the UML sense of the word. It's a stereotypical annotation. And that annotation doesn't live in anything to do with Spring MVC or Spring WebFlex. It has nothing to do with HTTP at all. It generally designates a thing that handles requests from a protocol and connects that request to your business logic. It's a controller in the MVC sense of the word. And so in this installment, we're going to look at building WebSocket applications, right? Uh, Stomp and Stock.js and WebSockets all work together to form a really nice way to build services on top of WebSockets. This support debuted in Spring Framework 4 way back in 2013 or 14. Uh, and taken together, they give you a way to take WebSockets, which are pretty uh, Spartan, and use them to do some interesting things. Stomp is an envelope that you can use to communicate uh, payloads back and forth from client to service over WebSockets. Stomp adds headers and it has a uh, distinct area for a payload. And so you can communicate uh, as long as both sides know that you're using Stomp. This is important because WebSockets by themselves don't have headers, which is a bit of a problem if you're trying to propagate out-of-band information like, oh, I don't know, a security token or something like that, right? Something you would think that they would have added to the WebSocket protocol uh, proper, but they somehow failed to do. We're going to also use Sock.js. Sock.js is in turn a JavaScript library uh, that can emulate WebSockets, the WebSocket API uh, in the browser, even if they're not directly available. So in theory, you could have an application that degrades gracefully uh, for older browsers. Now naturally, uh, we have WebSocket support. It's 2021. You can count on that being pretty prolific in nearly every, every browser out there, but just in case. Isn't it nice to know that you could still get a WebSocket-like API, a shim, if you will, allowing you to emulate that behavior, uh, and it just works? So there you have it. That's, that's the, those are the ingredients in our particular controller soup. Uh, let's dive right into it. Um, I want you to, uh, uh, you know, take note that we're just beginning to scratch the surface here. Uh, and also keep in mind that there's actually two different approaches to building WebSocket-based applications in the Spring ecosystem. I'm going to show you the at controller model because that's, after all, the, the, uh, the focus uh, of our series. But you can also build at controllers or you can actually build uh, WebSocket handlers, uh, which are uh, part of the Spring WebFlex world, right? So Spring WebFlex is the reactive web runtime. And there's a uh, WebSo WebSocket uh, handler that you can build that's a, actually a component. It's an interface that gets given a request. And so that's a different topic, and we've looked at that in some, uh, some form or another in previous installments of Spring Tips. Let's dive right into it. The support in Spring MVC is tied to Stomp. Stomp assumes uh, that the contents of the WebSocket message are going to be encoded a certain way. And this is very convenient because WebSockets, by default, don't have headers. They don't have the kind of things you'd expect from a real messaging protocol. So Stomp uh, gives you some of that. Now, uh, in order to use it, though, you need to be aware that your client needs to understand both what you're going to encode and the stop message that will encode it, and then the WebSocket protocol itself. There's three levels of contract there. All right, let's go ahead and build a new controller here. We're going to build a controller that works with two different types of data. Greeting request, which will have a string name, and greeting response, which will have a message. All right, now the greetings controller uh, will deal with any requests to produce responses. So we'll say that when somebody goes to the message mapping mounted endpoint called chat, and this is a different annotation, right? This is not get mapping or a mapping. This is an annotation that you'll see when you're dealing with messaging uh, protocols like RSocket and WebSockets, okay? So messaging, uh, the message mapping uh, is meant to describe generic endpoints uh, and uh, they change from one protocol to another. So when a request comes into message mapping, we want to send the response that we produce from this uh, endpoint to a topic. I'm going to call this topic greetings. 
So when somebody goes to chat and sends a message to this chat endpoint, we're going to send a response. And we want that to, to be sent to a topic, which is a one-to-many broadcast uh, feed. And we're going to be taking a greetings request. And we'll say, assert that the request.getName dot car at zero is uppercase. Okay. The name must start with a capital letter. Okay. And then we'll return a new greetings response. And uh, we'll say hello request dot name. Okay. Now, just to introduce some asynchronicity to it, we'll sleep as well. So 1,000 milliseconds. And of course, we need to account for that in the, the signature here. All right. So we're going to return a name. We're going to return a response. And each time somebody makes a request to this, if there if there's somebody else consuming the topic greetings, they'll get the hello whatever. So it doesn't matter how many browsers you log into, everybody will see the updates coming from this topic. All right, pretty cool. Okay, so now we have our greetings WebSocket controller. We need to configure a few things. So we're going to use, we're going to create a configuration class. So it'll be greeting web socket configuration socket message broker configure. We also need to enable WebSocket message broker. And we have a couple of methods that we want to override register stomp endpoints and configure message broker. All right. So registry dot enable simple broker to forward slash topic. We'll say registry dot set application destination prefix forward slash app. And then finally for this one, I want to say registry dot add endpoint forward slash chat with SockJS support. All right, there's our configuration. So I'll go over here to the static directory and create a new file called index.html. So I'll go ahead and hit paste. And here's our simple SockJS stomp client. Let's go ahead and walk through what it's doing. First, we have a JavaScript library that we're using for SockJS support. Then we have a library we're using to convert the payloads of those messages into stomp, which has headers and payloads as we discussed earlier. This is very natural, by the way. You want that for things like security. So you have the uh, out of band token that you can use to authenticate. And then we have the client and the client saying, okay, when the window loads, create a new SockJS uh, client, and then you know adapt that client into a stomp client, use the stomp client to on connection, uh, then subscribe to the topic for the greetings, and then send a message to forward slash app chat uh, for Tammy. And as soon as that message arrives, it'll be broadcast to all the listeners listening in on this topic. Let's go ahead and try this out. Okay. Refresh, go to the browser console, and you can see it says, hello, Tammy. So let's go ahead and open up another instance, All right? And if we resize these and get these next to each other, I'm going to refresh on the left, and you can see it moving on the right. So I'm getting... I'm refreshing over here, which is triggering more messages on the right. Okay, so good. So that's working just fine. Now, what about that validation use case? Well, here too, you can use exception handling, right, to, to make sure that things do the right thing when something goes wrong. So I can put this in either a controller advice or I can just put it here, message exception handler. And I want to say send to topic errors, string handle exception, exception E. And uh, we're going to print out the message. So we'll say there's a message, a uh, var message, something went wrong processing the request. I'll just say return message. We'll print that out as well. Very good. Let's restart. Very good. Now, 
We can also listen for that here in the client. So we can say, I want to subscribe to errors. Error. Good. And to test this, we're going to add a lowercase name as well. All right, let's return to the browser on both sides. There you go. So I'm sending a request on the left. And as I do that, I get error. Something went wrong. Error. Something went wrong, etc. So I'm getting the message itself. And then here's the my code responding to it. You can actually see this is kind of like debug information from Stomp itself. But the stuff that I'm dealing with in my user space code is right here. All right. So not bad, huh? I'm, I'm now able to forward errors on, onward as well. There's another concept called a user endpoint. So instead of just topic, there's an endpoint called user. And that actually that's actually tied to a session. So you can actually send a message to a particular user by their username. You can go a step further with this arrangement and actually tie it to something like RabbitMQ. The RabbitMQ support can be used as the center bus uh, forwarding messages back and forth. So the potential is really quite, quite amazing. Uh, obviously, we're just beginning to scratch the surface, but you can see WebSockets are awesome. Great way to, they're a great way to add interactivity and dynamic service side uh, sort of events to a client. I hope you got something out of that quick look at controllers and their use in building messaging centric systems. This isn't the last time that you'll see the venerable and versatile at controller uh, being used for messaging style interactions. We'll revisit it when we look at our socket in an upcoming installment uh, in this series exploring at controllers. Well, that's it for this week. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.